Hey there, welcome to the Marketers Take Flight podcast. I am your host, Lindsay Divin, founder of Marketers Take Flight and the creator of the Proposal Pro course. I am obsessed with helping AEC marketers just like you put order back into the proposal process, create winning strategies, and build the confidence and courage to advance your career. Each week, I will be sharing tangible and tactical advice and inspiring interviews to fly through the proposal turbulence and have your career take off. So let's dive right in. Go, no-go process can be a sensitive topic for some firms and marketing professionals. Some AEC firms have a pretty stringent go, no-go process that quite frankly can be manipulated. Other firms have some sort of evaluation, but it's not consistent. Many firms don't have any go, no-go consideration at all. They just go after all RFPs. Your firm may even fit into one of those categories. I do think go, no-go evaluations have a purpose. I just don't want us to get hung up on the process or a form. And that's what today's episode is about. I'm going to share why I think it's so hard for AEC firms to make these decisions or stick to a process, what the real purpose of a go, no-go decision should be. And I'll walk you through an example go, no-go evaluation process you can implement at your firm. Stay till the end of the episode to learn how you can get an example go, no-go evaluation questions to put into your process. First, let's pause a moment to think why you're listening to this episode. It's either because your firm doesn't have any go, no-go decision-making process, but maybe wants to start one, or you do have one sort of, but everyone just ignores it. Either way, you want your you want to help your firm make better decisions when it comes to what projects to pursue so that you will have the time to properly position, time to create beautiful and compelling proposals, and frankly, just have a life outside of work. And even if you're not the person making the ultimate go or no-go decision, I want you to know that you can lead and facilitate this decision-making process for your firm. Okay, so let's start out to understand why making timely and meaningful go or no-go decisions is challenging for our AEC firms. I can sum it up with one phrase, FOMO, the fear of missing out. In our case, or in this instance, it's it's often because we are so fearful of making the wrong decision or not winning. We know that if we don't submit a proposal at all, there's no chance to win. If But if we do submit, there's at least a chance that we might win, even if we know deep down that that chance is like really, really, really close to 0%. But there's still a sliver of a chance. And we also know that we need, our firms need to win work all of the time. It's like, you know, a constant cycle of winning work. We have to keep bringing in new projects to keep our employees busy with work. And to do this takes submitting proposals on an ongoing basis. So every time a new RFP is advertised or a request to bid is sent to your project manager, there is pressure to submit no matter what. The person who is bringing you that RFP is worried that if you don't submit on this one, there may not be another one or when that next one or when that next one will be or that your competitors will win instead. I know that our principals or our project managers who are bringing us the RFPs aren't going to say this out loud to us. Um, They're not going to tell us that they're scared or worried or anxious or that they want to submit because of FOMO. They'll never admit it. Maybe they don't even know that's why they're compelled to chase every RFP. They just haven't thought about it. Even if you do have a go, no-go decision form or process in place now, they might not even complete it or just answer it in a way to get the score they need for a go decision. So you know that your firm shouldn't be chasing every RFP. You know that... Not only is this costing your firm money and time and expenses for each proposal, but it's also costing you time away from more strategic pursuits and those pre-proposal activities that will give you an advantage to win more work. 
So you might be thinking, Lindsay, well, why do them? What's the purpose of even talking about go, no-go decision-making processes? And what I believe the real purpose of this topic is for your team to come together to review the potential project, the client requirements, the risk, the workload, et cetera, and come to a consensus if it's the right project at the right time that your firm has a really good shot at winning. And now you might be wondering, if I, if I don't want you to have a stringent pro- process, why should your firm even do go no-go evaluations? And beyond the obvious reasons of workload, expense, and frustration of not winning, there are a few other reasons to decide on you know, committing to a go, no-go decision-making process. And those reasons include pursuing clients where you can win, do a good job, make money, and win repeat projects. Who doesn't want that? What firm doesn't want that? Another reason could be um, avoiding chasing that work for which you have limited experience and qualifications and have a poor chance of winning. Not only does that cost you time and money, but it's just as it sucks to lose. And so if you keep doing that, it's just going to bring down the office or the department. Another reason is avoiding chasing and winning work that could put your firm at risk. So if you're not qualified or it's a new service or you're not sure about all the project details, how much risk are you putting your firm at if you chase it, not only chase it, but then you end up winning it? Um, It could end up costing your firm a lot more later down the line. Another reason is by using a go, no, go decision-making process, you can start identifying patterns of your opportunities that were pursued and won. Um, if you collect, start collecting that da- data. And then once you have that data, you can see how you can use that information more strategically to, you know, come up with patterns or, you know, kind of some forecasting or predictability. That's like really level, you know, two or three. So hopefully now I've convinced you that you need some kind of decision making process around which projects to pursue. But now you might be thinking, well, how do I get started with this decision-making process or when I have an RFP that crosses my desk? First up is to gather information. The more information about the project, the client, the decision-makers, the better your decision will be. And a lot of people often refer to this as your pre-positioning or your capture planning. And during this process, you will gather intel and formulate win strategies And sometimes the RFP comes out and you haven't done this. So what information can you gather about the project um, when you have that RFP in hand? So still take some time to gather information about the client, the project, and the decision makers, even if you didn't have time to do the pre-position or the capture planning. So then you want to estimate the costs for the pursuit efforts, the timeline, and the resources required. But don't stop there. You'll also want to identify the costs or budgets for the project, the project timelines, and the outcomes expected, you know, just in case you win. Um, You kind of want to just have this idea of what it's going to cost to win the project and then what the project costs, you know, what the actual revenue is going to be that the project's going to bring in, the schedule for the project, and the outcomes, you know, what when you win that project, what would success for that project look like for that client? And this is where any client relationship meeting notes, any summaries, any even previous win strategies with that client will also help in this information gathering stage. So once you have all that information, you'll want to pull together either via Zoom or in person Um, your internal stakeholders. And those are the folks within your firm with the knowledge of either the client or the client and the project. Ideally, you'll want people who can think through both the project risks and benefits, as well as the opportunity or the proposal efforts and the costs. So it's not just going to be the people that are going to do the work, but the people that can kind of see it at a higher level, you know, and what it means to your firm. You should also include the person who brought the pursuit to the firm's attention. Also, if you have a person who is responsible for meeting a sales goal for that particular office or a region or department, 
that person should also be included in this discussion. And depending on the size of your firm, this may be only you and one other person, but at larger or mid-sized firms, this could be up to five or six people. The main point here is that the appropriate people should be involved in the discussion. You know, and so a Zoom meeting it, these days will work. Um, or a phone call or a Zoom meeting. The main point here is that you need to bring together these internal stakeholders um, to talk it out amongst themselves, like in real time. Having the discussion via email and the back and forth emails should be avoided at all costs. Every time that's happened with me with that, it just never ended well. Okay, so once you've uh, you've gathered the information, you've at least identified the internal stakeholders, and maybe you're trying to get a meeting or a quick, you know, a thirty minute meeting or something set up. You'll want to decide on the evaluation factors next. And these evaluation factors will be used by the group to make the decision. And this is where, you know, those stringent one size fits all go no go forms or processes might not always work for your firms, especially if your firm has different markets or industries that they serve. Because these markets or industries, you know, are unique and often every project and situation are unique, the factors you consider may be diff- may d- be different. Now, you might have some base factors that are used for your whole firm, but then different ones, like let's say it's an education project versus a healthcare project. You might have different factors for those. But no matter what, the go, no-go evaluation factors must match the project under consideration. Bottom line financial risks are always important. But it's also important to consider some maybe intangible outcomes, such as a stronger or weaker relationships with others in that industry or market, maybe new opportunities that could arise through the process of completing the project, and so on. So that's why I don't like these, you know, just an Excel document that everybody uses in the firm, because it only tells a little bit of the story. It's a good place to start. But that's also why I like to, you know, bring together the appropriate internal stakeholders to have this discussion. You have the internal stakeholders, you have the evaluation factors. And so now the stakeholders gather and they agree on the factors to consider. It's time to now analyze the project in question against those decision-making factors. If those internal stakeholders do this objectively, and that's a big if, but it happens, it's... But if they do it, you know, they run through the evaluation criteria objectively, it's likely that you will have little trouble in coming to an outcome everybody can agree upon. Often it's clear that a project really is or is not the best choice for your firm at the present time. And I'll come back to that. So eventually the group will come to a decision. And while the decision often lies with one manager or principal, it does make good sense to work toward developing a consensus on a go, no go decision with all the involved internal stakeholders. Another key point here is that the project may be a good project. Your firm can complete the work and deliver a very successful project. However, there may be factors revealed during your evaluation or the discussions with the internal stakeholders that would not make this project a good fit for your firm to pursue right now in like the present time. And that's okay. I think this, I highly recommend while you're talking or having these discussions with your internal stakeholders to use language such as not yet, not this time, or not under these circumstances. Those type of phrases when discussing the go, no go decision, this allows your team and more specifically, the person who brought the project to leave that discussion with a more positive feeling. They will feel like their idea for the pursuit was heard and respected. And the last thing we want to do with these types of discussions, especially with eager business developers or seller doers, is to discourage them from bringing new opportunities to the table, especially if it's a a no-go. Another reason is it really lessens that FOMO Um, It lessens that fear of missing out because we're not saying like we're never going to do it. It's just saying right now under our certain circumstances with our certain staffing or with all these other pursuits going on, we just can't make it work. Um, And so that's why I like to use those phrases 
instead of no, just maybe not this time, not under these circumstances, not right now, those type of phrases. I love that more so than just no go. Okay, so I've put together a go, no go decision making matrix for you. So you can kind of see some of the like in graphics because we're on audio right now. Um, So you can see this visually, some of the sample criteria or factors um, that were considered for an example project. Um, It looks at positive, neutral and negative aspects for each criteria. And the idea is to develop and review this as a group to reach the consensus. You can find this graphic over at the show notes page at marketerstakeflight.com forward slash 54. And if you need even more inspiration to help you develop your go, no go decision making, I've put together a list of 32 questions. I've personally used most of them in the past in different scenarios. I don't use all 32 um, in one evaluation. I just want to note that out. Other questions I've gathered through either research or collected from other marketers in the industry. So you can get your copy, again, over at the show notes page at marketerstakeflight.com forward slash 54. Feel free to download these, use them, and adapt them for your firm as you need. In the end, I think everyone wants what's best for the firm and its success. And making better go, no-go decisions, especially those that are a result of a consensus, allows you and your firm more time to focus on proposals that have the greatest chance of winning and more time to produce higher quality proposals for those pursuits. Okay, so now I want to hear from you. Does your firm have a go, no-go evaluation process? And if so, how effective do you think it is? And what could be approved, improved upon it? Share your thoughts over on the show notes page at marketerstakeflight.com forward slash 54. And don't forget to grab those sample questions while you're over there. Okay, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. And if you liked what you heard today, please share it with your marketing and business development friends. I'm a firm believer that as our individual skills improve, it helps our entire industry grow. All right, that's it for me today. Until next time, bye for now.